All right, it is 12.05, so I'll go ahead and get started. Um, hey, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I am Sydney Mori Garrett, one of the Idea Fund partners from Project Row Houses, and I'll be leading today's info session. I'm joined on the call today with Ashley De Hoyos from Diverse Works, Camilo Gonzalez from Aurora Picture Show, and Joseph Bowie, the Idea Fund intern. Not on the call is Danielle Burns Wilson from Project Row Houses, who is also a TIP partner. So as we get started, please use the chat box to tell us your names, pronouns, and where you're tuning in from. Um, today, we're going to go through what the Idea Fund is and what kind of projects we fund, the application process, some application tips, frequently asked questions, and then the floor will open up for a Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions anytime throughout the presentation, please make sure to drop them in the Q&A box. The info session is being recorded and will be archived. So if you want to revisit any of this information, or maybe you have a friend that couldn't make it today, please revisit it at theideafund.org. And now I will get into the land acknowledgement before we start the presentation. We believe that truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection. And we would like to acknowledge that our offices are located on the ancestral lands of the Atakapau Ishak Karankwa people and the native peoples that share the Southeast Texas region, including the Como Cruz, Tonkawa, and Kowalutiken. We acknowledge this land as occupied, unceded territory and pay tribute to them. We honor their elders, past and present, as well as future generations. For those of you who would like to do the same, please share your own land acknowledgement in the chat. So we're gonna get into it. The history and mission of the Idea Fund. Our mission at the Idea Fund provides grants to individual artists or collectives in the greater Houston area. The grants support innovative, experimental, public facing visual art projects that expand our understanding of how art exists in the world, addresses community needs, or exemplifies new ways of working in, for, and with community. Um, so as mentioned in the beginning, art partners are Diverse Works, Aurora Picture Show, and Project Row Houses, and we are funded by the Andy Warhol Foundation. Um, the Idea Fund has supported 65 artists in need as part of Round 13 Emergency Relief Grant in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. A total of 170 projects involving over 517 artists and artist collectives and creative communities within the greater Houston metropolitan area and the nine surrounding counties. So this is the timeline that we're working with. The application was launched on August 24th of 2022, so it is currently available. The application deadline is November 7th of 2022, and that will be at 11.59 p.m. Uh, the jury review will happen in early January of 2023. Awardees will be notified by mid-January of 2023. So if you do apply, please note that um, time frame just so you know when to look out for that important email. Award reception will be early February of 2023 and final reports from the awardees are due by December of 2023. Um, and of course, we are currently at the info session um, on October 15th at noon, or 14th at noon, I'm sorry. Um, and the next info session will be November 1st at 10 a.m. So who can apply? The Idea Fund supports individual artists, artists, curators, collectives, or collaboratives. If applying as a group, the collective or collaborative can be longstanding or created specifically for the project. Geographic eligibility, the lead artists must reside in one of the following counties, which are Austin, Brazoria, Chambers, Fort Bend, Galveston, Harris, Liberty, Montgomery, or Waller. So if you are working in a group, People in your group can live elsewhere, but the main person in the project has to live in the counties that I just mentioned. And all past TIF project grant 
and the TIF or emergency relief grant recipients are eligible to apply for round 16. So if you've received the grant before, you can still apply. While anyone can apply, Round 16 funded proposals will take innovative approaches to the urgent questions of our moment and create lasting impacts on its intended communities. Ineligible projects are projects proposed by a 501c3 nonprofit organization, projects in which the lead artists live outside of the nine eligible greater Houston counties, which I mentioned on the previous slide, projects in which all artists reside outside of the nine eligible greater Houston area counties, projects that do not have a public component, uh, meaning projects that don't involve the public via process, production, or presentation, either online or in person, and projects that do not exemplify innovative practices in contemporary art. So what types of projects will be funded? Funded proposals will take innovative approaches to the urgent questions of our moment and create lasting impacts on its intended communities. The IDEA Fund seeks to exemplify equity, display artistic originality, and propel artistic growth. Project activities must, must function primarily within or have a strong connection to the visual arts. So examples of visual arts practices can include, but definitely are not excluded to, um, painting, drawing, sculpture, social practice, performance, film and video, photography, textile, ceramics, cross-disciplinary works, public art, new media, sound, and digital processes, and of course, the field of visual arts is always expanding, so I'm sure this list is even longer. Okay, so now we're going to get into some examples of past projects that were funded by the IDEA Fund. And if you ever did want to look these projects up yourself, I did just want to show you if you go to the homepage of theideafund.org and then you click on grant recipients, here you will see all of our past rounds and the years. And if you click on any of them, so if I click on round 14, you will see um, all of the projects and then you can click on these to learn more about them. So now that you know where to find them, I'm going to get into three. So round 14, which happened in 2021, uh, we awarded Two Dykes and a Knife, uh, which is an artist duo uh, comprised of Pritika Rajgaria and Lovey Olivia. So um, the pandemic affected their culinary practices. So with this grant, they proposed to host a virtual dining experience via Zoom. For each event, they delivered about 10 meals and invited people to open and set up their meals together via Zoom. The guests had the unique experience of plating their own meals by following directions provided by the artists. And you can view the project on our website, of course. Um, you can also learn more about them and their practices if you go to twodikesandanife.com. So the next project was a part of round 11, which happened in 2019. Uh, Rising Tide Projects by Jessica Nincy and Dan Schmall. Um, Rising Tide Projects is an artist-run hybrid space, space that serves as an equal parts gallery, workshop and community space and a retail hub that takes into consideration the architectural issues associated with Galveston Island's environmental future. Together, Jessica and Dan designed Rising Tide projects as a space, not only to showcase art, but to envision gallery practices that respond to and create flexibility around the utilization of a space that is constantly at risk of possible flooding. So this project was in Galveston. If you want to learn more, you can go to their Instagram at Rising Tide Projects. And then in 2018, um, we also funded Pamela Council uh, for Red Drink, a Black Sidermi Juneteenth offering. 
Um, red drinks are popular throughout Black Atlantic cultures and are a tradition, a traditional celebratory beverage of Juneteenth. Some of us here may be familiar with cheer wine or big red soda or Kool-Aid as an offering to the ancestors and an attraction to the public during the summertime, council created a fountain filled with red drink. The fountain was placed in Galveston where she hosted performances and provided cups that were printed with pertinent information about freedom, history, and the red drink. And you can learn more about council's project um, at her website, familycouncil.com. And of course, you can also find it on the Idea Fund website. Okay. I'll jump back here real quick. Okay, so now we are going to get into the application, how to apply. Applications must be completed online via submittable. The online application will prompt you to provide the following, which is your project summary and description, your resume and CV, your budget and budget description, and five work samples. The Idea Fund accepts the following work sample formats, which are JPEG, video links via Vimeo, audio files, and Word documents or PDFs. JPEG should not be larger than one megabyte. Applications must state how their project is related to contemporary and visual art and describe how their work focuses on social and cultural equity. So now we're going to actually look at the application. And again, if you go to the Idea Fund homepage at ideafund.org, it's on the homepage. If you scroll down, you can click apply now and it will take you straight to the application. So it'll take you to this page. This is what the application looks like. If you don't already have an account, Submittable will ask you to create one and creating an account is super easily, easy and completely free of cost. Um, and when you open the application, it will show you all of the information that we basically just went through. So if you want to review it again, you can do so here. And then we get into the fill in section of the application. It starts off with demographic information, um, your name, your email, your phone number, address, zip code. And then we ask what county you live in. That's just to make sure that you are within the um, counties that are accepted for this application. And then we ask if you've awarded the, if you've been awarded the Idea Fund grant before, and if yes, what year were you awarded the grant? Um, this will not penalize you in any way because again, if you have been awarded the grant before, you are still eligible to apply. We are just wanting to know who is returning to the Idea Fund. Um, and this is really for our internal documentation. Um, and then same with this question here, if you answer no, how many times have you previously applied to the Idea Fund? This does not hinder your application in any way. We just wanna know who is returning to us. And in order to continue our promotional efforts, please let us know how you learned about the Idea Fund. Um, we just want to know how you heard about us, right? And let's see. Okay. And then we get into a demographic survey. This is completely voluntary. Um, so if you prefer not to answer, you can select that in each of the categories. Um, and if you do choose to answer and you want to choose more than one option, um, that is open as well. And then we would like for you to define the art practice or discipline that you are proposing to work within. Um, and this section, you can also select more than one option. And then we're going to ask for your bio. Uh, please submit a short bio about yourself or collective, a maximum of 500 words. If you are working with a collective and you have history of working with each other before, um, that bio can be combined. If you haven't worked with each other before, you can split up that 500 words um, amongst yourselves to make sure that everyone fits into the bio section. And then we're going to ask that you submit your artistic resume or CV. Uh, this can be up to five files um, and we accept a PDF or a document file. Uh, please make sure that that CV is current. 
if you are in a group, um, the lead artist CV is required. And also remember that lead artist has to reside within the nine Houston area counties that we've listed. Um, and you can submit up to four additional resumes. And then we're asking for a link to your website. This website can be, you know, a traditional website that may be hosted through Squarespace or something like that, um, or an Instagram page, or if you're showing your work via TikTok, just whatever URL you're using to showcase your work, you would like to see that. And then we get into the project description. We ask for a title, your project summary. Think about this as your elevator pitch. Um, we're asking for no more than 150 words or less. Um, and then after that, we do ask for a longer project description. Um, so this will be 550 words or less. And this is where you will tell us who you are, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, and then you can consider answering these questions within your description, which are, who are you and why do you want to create this project? What distinguishes your project from other projects happening regionally and nationally? What is your vision for the project and how will it be shared or experienced? Um, and then we ask that you describe the goal of your project. Your limit is 200 words for this section. Um, and for this section, we uh, are asking what impact will your project have on its communities and audience? And then after that, we get into how does this project relate to contemporary and visual art? The limit here is also 200 words. Um, and here you can include some of your influences, um, whether that be artists or collectives or other projects. Um, and I think we get a lot of questions about this section. And I, the way that I like to describe it is that we're just kind of looking to see how your work fits into the canon of other contemporary visual art work that is in the world. Um, and we want to see that you are thinking about how your, con how your work connects to conversations that are already happening. Um, so maybe think about it that way as well. Okay, and then we'll get into the budget. Um, so for the budget, we will accept Excel files, document files, um, or PDFs. And we actually have a sample budget um, that you can work off if you would like. So we can switch to that, great. Okay, so this sample is not required for you to use. If you have done budgets before, or if you have a template that already works well for you, please feel free to submit that. Um, this is just here as a helpful guide or a template um, if you did want to work off of this document. So um, let's see. On the left-hand side here, uh, we will have all of the expenses and that can be either cash or in kind. Someone's asking me to make it bigger, sure. Is that better? Great, okay. Um, okay, so on the left-hand side, you'll see the expenses um, and that can be either in cash or in kind. Um, in kind is essentially like a donation. So if you have a friend um, that does videography work and they are donating their services to document, um, you would put that in kind. Um, and then the sheet will calculate the total budget and then you can add any additional notes to the items if you need to. So we have artist fees, which is very important. Um, we definitely want to see that you are thinking about paying yourself. We recommend that you pay yourself between 20 and 35% of the budget. If you choose not to pay yourselves, that is something that jurors typically note in the jury session. Um, and it's not something that we encourage or condone. So um, please make sure to include that in your budget sheets. And then per diem, um, think about this as a daily allowance. So the example that I like to give is if you are traveling, for four days and you are accounting $50 of each day to 
pay for your food or transportation, um, you can put that in the per diem section. And then any costs for travel, of course, housing, ground transportation, those are all um, good to note. And of course, if you need to take out any of these items or add, modify this document as needed. Um, production and public components of the budget sheet could include your materials and supplies, hired labor, equipment, venues or rental fees, documentation, contracted services, or other things like maybe you need to get a permit because you're putting on a public event and there's going to be loud sound, you'll put in that budget item here. And then any marketing costs are also fair to put on your budget list like flyers, postcards, posters, and any web and media costs. So once you fill all of this in, the sheet will calculate all of your total expenses. And then when we get into the green section, I think this is where um, the calculating really comes into play and it gets really important. So here, the idea fund grant, everyone here should be putting 5,000 because that's what we're offering this year. Um, if you are receiving other grants or expect to receive other grants, we do ask that you list that out as well. Um, this won't hinder your application in any way. We just want to know, for instance, if your project is estimated to be $10,000 and the idea fund is only $5,000, we want to know that you're already thinking about how to get that additional $5,000 and where that's coming from um, and hopes that your project actually happens and comes to fruition. Um, so please calculate every dollar that, the, that your project needs in this sheet. Um, other cash donations, you can also input this here. So um, say a good friend is just giving you 200 bucks um, and there really is no service attached to that. You can then put that in this section. In-kind goods and services will carry over um, from this calculated right section into the green. Um, and if you have any ticket sales or merchandise sales and you're getting income from that, um, we would like for you to put that in here as well. And then we always want to make sure that this green total income equals the red total expenses. Um, and so again, going back to the $10,000 project example. Um, if your project is $10,000 and you're only accounting for $7,000 and we kind of see that discrepancy, um, there's just going to be questions about where those other few thousands of dollars went. Um, and you really don't want questions to come up in the budget section because the jurors are just going to want to know how you're going to be spending the money. So um, if you have any questions about this, of course, feel free to reach out to us after the call or put it in the Q&A section below. And then at the bottom of the budget sheet, we also have a section where you can tell us anything else that you would like to about your budget. There is also a similar section in the application as well, if you would rather do that separately. So I'm going to go back to the application. Once you're done with that, you'll then input that file in this budget section. And then this is that additional section that I mentioned where you can get into more details and notes about that budget sheet if you would like to do so. And then we get into work samples. Um, you can attach up to five work samples, acceptable, acceptable file types are PDFs, docs, JPEGs, or MP3s. Um, and JPEG should be no larger than one megabyte and work samples may be related to the project proposal or respective previous works. So a question that we get about this section a lot is I am proposing a video installation project that's happening on the bayou, but I've never done anything like that before, what work samples do I submit? And I would say for a case like that, if you've done video before, maybe it's on the bayou, you can submit that video. If you've done work on the bayou before, but maybe it's not a video, you can submit 
you know, images from that work on the bayou. Um, if you have renderings of examples of what you want that work on the bayou to look like or drawings or sketches, you can submit that as well. Um, really any connection that you can make from the work samples to your presentation um, are acceptable to submit. And if you do have a video link, we do ask that it's on Vimeo um, and you can provide up to three minutes of video in that link. Of course, always make sure that that video link is not password protected or locked. Make sure that it works. I recommend sending it to a few friends before submitting your application just to make sure that they can open and view the video without any issues. And then after that, you can submit um, project or work sample descriptions, sorry, um, to describe how your work samples connect to um, your proposed projects. And the great thing about submitt submittable is that it does save your progress. Um, I would recommend clicking this saved draft button at the bottom before you exit in case you do need to visit the application at a later time. Uh, please remember applications are due on November 7th at 11.59 p.m. Um, and we will not be able to accept applications past that date and time. So if you are leaving and coming back, just make sure to submit it by then. And then you click submit and then you'll be good to go on the application part. So. So now we're going to go through some um, application tips. So for the project summary and description, remember to keep it simple. Um, always address the following, which is who, what, when, where, and why. What are the core ideas and lines of inquiry behind your thoughts? Why do you want to do this project? Why is this important or urgent to you, to the city, to the community, etc.? And tell us what your vision is. What do you hope to achieve? How will it physically be presented? Where will it be presented? And who is your audience? So these are all questions um, that we recommend that you consider in this summary and description section. In the budget, be detailed and realistic. If you have additional funding and or plan to apply with a project budget beyond $5,000, explain where the additional money is coming from. Share your money research. How did you decide to pay $500 for your materials? Um, and then, of course, we're going to talk about this again. Remember to pay yourself. We recommend that you pay yourself between 20 to 35% to cover creative and intellectual labor. Your work samples, share samples that support your work, including project plans. This will help the jurors understand your practice, interests, and the proposed project's feasibility. Work samples can include mock-ups, past work, new work, or video. We also encourage that you share descriptions and information about the project in the additional or in the additional upload work description PDF. We're going to get into some frequently asked questions. What types of projects are eligible for funding? Key considerations for applications will include artistic and creative strength of the proposed project, overall vision of the applicant, capacity of the applicant to realize the project, accessibility of the resulting project to the public as either an in-person or online event, project, or program, and commitment to serving a local community. Projects must adhere to COVID-19 safety precautions and restrictions to ensure the health and safety of everyone involved. This includes wearing masks, providing space for social distancing, and limiting groups to the size authorized by the Texas Department of Health and the Houston's Mayor's Office. What are some of the past projects or ideas that have been funded? The Idea Fund has supported a wide range of projects, and here are a few that have been awarded in the past and or fit within our mission slash vision. So the work of an individual artist, collective or temporary association of artists, 
a project of a temporary or permanent artist run space, curatorial projects that focus on unconventional artistic practice, an exhibition that has a strong public component, for example, projects which involve the public via process, production, or presentation, publications of creative writing, including printed matter and online publications, a public event, performance or intervention, a screening, a lecture, or a workshop series, site-specific installations, web-based projects, audio, video, and photo projects, online virtual engagements and events, social practice-based projects, or community events. And again, you can look at all of our past projects um, online at theideafund.org. So what if we already received an idea fund? Can we reapply? Yes, you can definitely reapply. All past idea fund project grants and idea fund emergency relief grant recipients are eligible to apply for round 16. Uh, round 16 proposals will take an innovative approach to the urgent questions of our moment and create lasting impacts on its intended communities. What is the review process and selection criteria? All proposals are evaluated based on the following criteria. The artistic and creative strength of the proposed project, the overall vision of the applicants, uh, the capacity of the applicants to realize the project, the accessibility of the project to the public, the project's demonstration of community support and commitment to serving local constituency. A panel of professionals selects the projects through online and in-person panel process. The Idea Fund panelists offer a national, regional, and local perspective of the field. Traditionally, our TIFF panel model features the following perspectives, a regranting partner from another city, a past recipient with a local perspective, and a panelist with a national or regional perspective of the field. Um, and just also to note, the idea fund partners are not a part of the jury selection process. We are merely there to facilitate. Um, so we're not making the final decisions in the end. How many project proposals can I submit? You can submit as many as you'd like. Groups or collectives can submit one and each member can submit multiple individual projects. Note that the likelihood that a project with the same lead of a group or a collective and an individual project to be funded is slim. It is the decision of the panel of jurors. Um, so if you are in a group and you're submitting as a group and then you submit as an individual, um, that is possible, but both may not be selected. Do you offer application reviews before submitting? We do offer application reviews. Um, and if you are working on your project application and would like some direct feedback from a TIFF administrator or partner, you can sign up for virtual review sessions through the Calendly link below or through our website. TIFF partners are not directly involved in the application jury process, as I mentioned before, and all advice is offered as general recommendations or best practices based on past re-granting feedback and application experience. Okay, and now with that said, that is the end of the slideshow presentation. Um, so I believe the other partners will come back on camera now and we'll get into the Q&A section. Sydney, it looks like someone would like to see the points on tip number two. Also, for those of you that are tuning in, Joseph just put our Calendly link. This is how you all reserve time if you're interested in a feedback session. Um, and I also, um, we also just updated it so that on November 7th, we are available from 11 to 4, about 4 p.m. Um, so as you're submitting your applications and you need to check in with somebody, um, we're here available for you um, for that deadline. Uh, we do leave the office about five o'clock, so make sure you get to us before we head out for the day.
As we're waiting for questions to come in, Sydney, I think there was a couple that were in the chat that might be interesting to talk about. One was if you're a part of an organization, um, but you're not nonprofit, but you're fiscally sponsored, are you, you know, how does that affect your eligibility? Um, and um, so we, the Idea Fund is an individual artist award or collective. Um, so it would you would have to apply as an individual artist. Um, we do not on the back end um, fund nonprofits or fiscally sponsored projects. You can be fiscally sponsored, but your your the way that the payment would be processed, it would be paid through the individual artist or whoever the lead is of the collect collective. And you don't have to be fiscally sponsored to receive this award. Sydney, it looks like there's a question in the chat. Okay. Um, Andrew is asking, what about projects that could be potentially in partnership with a corporation, like a sponsor of some sorts? Um, Andrew, I assume that you're asking if that project would be eligible to apply. Um, okay. Great. I think it would be, Ashley. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, we yeah, it's totally fine if you have sponsors you're collaborating. It's just the funding would go to the individual artist or lead collective. Um, it's great if you do have that type of um, support. You can talk about it in your project description or you can share it with in your budget notes too. Yeah, especially if you're getting monetary sponsorship. Um, that should be included in your budget. Thanks, Ashley. Looks like there's another question in the Q&A. Okay. Um, if we do not have an exact location set for the project to be presented, will that hinder our chances at the grant? No. Um, it will not hinder your chances. We, we know that these proposals are likely to change as you start working on your projects, as you start doing research and meeting people. Um, and so there is a part of the proposal that we understand is tentative. Um, and so if you don't have a location confirmed, um, or if you're just thinking about locations, uh, we just ask that you be transparent about that um, in your project description. Um, so if you're thinking about three places, put out those three options. Um, if you have a place confirmed, put that. Um, but yeah, we know that things are going to change as you're working. Someone asks, look at tip one on the slide for the project summary and description. Um, okay, and someone is also asking if a 5K project is discouraged. No, not at all. Um, if your project is within 5K um, and the funds from the IDEA Fund can you know, fully support it, that's wonderful. Um, we just know that in a lot of in a lot of cases, people may have other funding coming from other places. Um, so we want to note to you know make sure to say that in your budget sheet. But if that's not the case for you, then that's totally fine. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A um, or in the chat. Of course, if you're thinking about them, uh, please drop them in. Um, Ashley, was there anything else that maybe you wanted to add to the presentation that maybe I didn't get to while we're waiting for folks? If not, it's fine. I don't mean to put yeah, you Yeah, no, I think the biggest thing um, that, you know, that's kind of newer that we, we haven't really we, we talk about, we, it's in the presentation, is those uh, review sessions. Like the idea of part, uh, fund partners are here. We're happy to review and read your application. As Sydney said, like we don't have a, um, we don't have a vote 
vote in the room, but we do um, have knowledge and can share some of that experience or ideas that the jurors are having uh, or conversations that the past jurors have had about the applications um, and, and review those. Um, so um, that's one thing that a lot, I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage of um, that we offer. Um, the grant process, while we say reporting is usually the calendar year of January through February, um, that process can be tentative um, in terms of like your grant, if you're applying for something that's gonna be done in April, you can apply and your funding will be supported. Um, and you know, up into your final report, which you could submit earlier than January or December of 2023. Um, there's also instances where we've had projects that have gone beyond that 2023 uh, or that calendar um, deadline. So um, as Sydney said, we understand that the process, once you're awarded the grant, the thing, the projects evolve and shift. Um, and so we're really flexible in working with our grantees about that. Um, I can't remember if we talked about it, but um, the other thing is, um, are the way that our payment process is, is that your, uh, the awardees will get awarded their first round of payments, which is usually the first 4,000 um, at their um, awards presentation, which is usually in early February. And then when they submit their final report, they, um, they, they, uh, get paid the final $1,000. Um, and so again, that like when you submit your final report is when you get the, fi the final funds. And it looks like we have questions now. Yes, thanks for that, Ashley. Um, okay, so someone asks, what is an example of community support that you want to see? Um, I don't know that we're necessarily asking for community support if that is a part of your project, um, then I think that that's great. I think we're really, we're looking for community involvement. Um, and so for example, if we go to, let me go back to that page. Um, two dikes and a knife project. Um, so with this project, again, they were um, inviting community members to um, have their food and really have a meal together during a time when we were in the pandemic, we weren't really connecting with people um, as much as we were used to. And so they were um, trying to bring connection back to their communities through food. Um, and so that is one example of community involvement in a project. Um, I also think that Pamela Council was a good example as, of that as well. Um, she did have this fountain and placed it in Galveston. She also had performances um, and invited folks to engage with the fountain. Um, so those are two that are at the top of mind because they were part of the presentation. Um, Ashley or um, Camilo or Joseph, anyone else on the panel, um, are there other thoughts of community involvement or support that come to mind from our past projects? I can't think of any right now. I think, um, you know, we think about that um, commitment to support a community or involve a community, it really is the process. So really thinking about, um, we're looking at projects that involve at either stage. So it's like, if are you developing the work with community? Are you in or in conversation? Are you um, presenting and engaging community? You know, that's really the public component. Um, a lot of times this conversation comes up when we're, we're looking at applications with artists who are um, proposing projects that are specific to um, a community or a theme or an urgent uh, matter. Um, one of the things is that if you are working in something that um, an, an area of the arts that might intersect um, community that you might need to be mindful of the history or um, like we see a lot of um, projects that want to heal, uh, work with um, 
use arts to work with our, um, survivors of, of different um, uh, is different um, social and political um, intersections. And um, sometimes, you know, one of the jurors are asking like, what is that artist um, uh, link or connection to that community? Um, you know, how does this, how, how are they developing the project? Is there, you know, do they have an expertise that will support that community? If not, are they bringing in other community members' voice or perspectives that can support? Um, so that's when we think we think about that community involvement and support, that's an, another example um, where it could show up. So just naming in your application, you know, what your idea is and your vision. And, you know, if you're not the expert, who, who are you bringing in or how are you bringing in the community voices? Thank you for that, Ashley. Um, so a follow-up question to that, someone asked, um, so are uh, metrics for community engagement aspiration based? Um, in response to that, I would say in the proposal stage, of course, um, there is no for sure way of knowing um, how the community will engage with the work. Um, we are just hoping to see that you are thinking about that aspect of your project um, and thinking about ways to um, either engage with a community that you are already a part of, connect with a community that you would like to be a part of. Um, and we want to know your thinking behind that. Um, and so in the proposal project, it is just kind of a guesstimate, I would say, of what that engagement would look like. Um, but in practice, that may look different. Um, and that is okay, because as Ashley and I mentioned before, we know that these projects shift um, and change with time. Um, so someone asks, can you elaborate on the definition of a collective that may apply? Um, a collective can be a range of you know, possibilities. It can be you and one other person, maybe that is a friend um, or a creative collaborator. It can be you and three different people, five different people, six different people. Um, I think what a collective looks like is very open. Again, as long as that um, lead person in the collective resides in the nine um, counties that are eligible for the IDEA fund. Um, and all of your bios are included in the application, um, then y'all are eligible to apply. So whatever that looks like is pretty open. That was currently the last question in the Q&A. Um, if you still have any more. Okay, there's a question that just popped up. Um, that says, how are the sections of jurors rubric weighted? Mm, that's a good question. I can't really recall the jurors rubric from last year. Ashley, you may know a little bit more about that than me at the moment. Yeah, so we actually, um, the way that our jury processing works is that we usually, um, once the applications close, we check for an eligibility. We let applicants know if they're not eligible. Um, and then we send all of the eligible applicants to our jurors and they have like two weeks to review the applications. Um, sometimes three, just depending on where the holidays fall. Um, they'll have a little bit longer this year. Um, but then what we do is we ask them to do a first uh, round ranking where we use submittable and the applicants or the jurors are reading all of the applications. Um, and they're keeping in mind the questions. So um, what is the artistic vision? What is the um, artistic um, capacity? Um, what does this project support um, a, a, a network or a community um, constituent? Um, and then um, there's two others. And so basically we're asking them to keep in mind all of those questions and fr the framework. And then the jurors will do a first round ranking of applications. Um, they leave notes and feedback if they can, so that when we do our feedback um, sessions, once the awardees have been notified, um, we can review 
you know, how they got to their ranking. Um, after that, then we go into a second round where we take the jurors top um, 50 to 30 applications. Um, we review them again and then um, in an in-person panel. Um, and we talk about them, uh, well, the jurors talk about the applications. Um, they raise questions. They, they look back at the, um, the guiding principles for our jury um, and begin to kind of assess uh, deeply what these applications um, look, uh, how they're, they're going to work. Um, and, uh, and then we do an, another round of ranking where we take um, our top um, 20 to top 15, depending on how many we bring into the final jury. Um, and um, that last ranking is where we really go in depth again about the applications, looking at budgets and resumes and um, the jurors really look at all of the detail that's in front of them. Um, and then from there, we get our final 12 um, grant, grant um, awardees. Um, and then um, that's kind of the process. So each, each application, depending on where they are in the process, may receive one to three levels of ranking. And then we basically average out all of those rankings. Um, and that's how we get our top 50 to 30 and top 20 to 15. And then our um, the final 12 is based on the jurors' notes and the kind of conversation from the day. Um, so that's how our process works. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so next question, someone asked, is there any way that the final projects are presented at the end of the year? Um, that presentation is really up to the artist. Um, and how they would like to present it. Um, and we do hope that you include that in your project proposal. Um, one thing to note with this question though, is that the three idea fund partners, Project Real Houses, Aurora Picture Show, and Diverse Works um, will not be able to present your work. So in your proposal, if you're thinking about doing something at Diverse Works or Aurora, um, that will not be able to happen because it will be a conflict of interest for this grant. Um, so keep that in mind. How many applications do you receive on average and how many projects are you accepting this year? Um, this year, we are granting 12 projects of $5,000 each. How many applications do we receive on average? I also do not remember how many applications we received last year. I want to say maybe in the 50s. Am I wrong on that? Yeah, we usually, last year we had, right, I think between like um, 100 and, I think we sent the jurors 103, but I think we maybe had 106 um, that, that people applied. Um, and then the year before that, I think we had 99 application. So it really just depends um, kind of what's going on in the city, you know, um, but it is, it is a pretty competitive app, uh, grant process just because we only have the $60,000 to give out. So um, because they are in 12, uh, 12 $5,000 chunks, um, we are limited to how many grants that we could award. Um, but um, we have definitely have seen an increase of collectives applying as well as like artist teams, um, which uh, allows us to fund one more artists in that, that 12. So um, that's usually um, how that works. We usually, with the, with the data that we've been able to collect from our voluntary surveys um, and that Sydney's showed, we are able to see that almost 80% of our applicants are first time grantees. Um, which is really cool um, to see that there's a lot of, like this is a grant that a lot of emerging uh, practitioners apply for and some and receive, um, but it is a very competitive process, unfortunately. Thanks for that, Ashley. Next question, are you able to include personal funds as additional funding for the budget? Yes, I don't see any reason why not. Again, please just put that on your budget sheet um, and make sure that you're paying yourself from the grant money, right? I think it might be a little bit odd if you're just paying yourself from your personal funds. Um, but other than that, I think that that's perfectly fine. 
Okay, um, next. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll add to that. It's just, it's about balance. The jurors want to see balance. Like if you're going to have something that's in kind and you have a bunch of in kind, um, like say your project's an $8,000 project, but 4,000 of it is in kind and, you know, uh, 4,000 will co come from um, the idea fund and maybe your, you know, um, that extra thousand will pay, pay yourself or however you configure it, right? Um, the jurors just want to see a balance. Like we don't, we we want you to pay yourself. Um, uh, if you have the opportunity to use personal funds and include it in your budget, that's great. Um, I, you know, it, it, we want to make sure that you're just kind of sharing that in budget narrative and and balancing it out. Um, you don't want it to be too heavy on personal funds or too heavy on um, in kind. Thank you. Um, next question, do pop-up screenings count as public engagement? Um, they definitely do. Again, we are looking for projects um, that are innovative and a little bit more on the, um, I guess, experimental side, I would say. So um, if you are doing a pop-up screening, maybe instead of thinking about like a gallery space or a museum, um, Maybe there is a cool place outside somewhere, just like an unconventional location for a pop-up screening, um, I think would fit more into what the idea fund is looking for. So whether that is like a parking lot or on the bus or in your car, um, the possibilities are really endless. So I would encourage you to think beyond the, the gallery space. Um, well, it is 102, and it looks like the Q&A and the chat questions um, have slowed down. Um, so I think we can go ahead and close this info session. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope that this was informative and helpful to, helpful to you. Um, good luck on your applications. Again, if you would like um, an application uh, review with one of the TIF um, partners, please make that appointment via our Calendly link. Applications are due November 7th at 11.59 p.m. Make sure you submit everything on time. Um, and this is recorded and it will be posted up on the Idea Fund website. So if you'd like to revisit it, feel free to do so. Thank y'all and enjoy the rest of your day.